Welcome to everybody uh, to our bite-sized session on the Trader Support Service. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by the team at TSS, who I'm going to hand over to shortly. My name's Amy Swindles, and I'm the Head of International Professional Services at Greater Manchester Chamber. Um, and just before I hand over, I'm just going to give you a, an overview very briefly to the Chamber for those of you that are new to us uh, and the support we offer, and also um, just a bit of an overview of what we've got coming up over the next couple of months. Um, so for those of you who don't know, we are a membership organisation offering business support to companies um, throughout the Greater Manchester region. We have uh, over 4,000 members and we also have a global business network um, which covers around 90 countries. So if you do need in any support with your import, export, uh, setting up overseas or companies coming to the UK, then uh, do get in touch. Um, this is just a little bit um, about what we offer. So we offer services all the way from um, market entry, market research, finding customers, distributors, um, through to the training, the more um, technical customs and compliance side, um, letters of credit, export documentation, um, and, and customs clearance documents. So if you need, if you require any of those documents or support with those, do get in touch. Uh, and we also offer transit and T1 documents, along with support on helping you get paid overseas. So whether that be through letter of credit, um, needing you know, overseas assistance, collecting debt, uh, performing international credit checks, um, our team uh, can offer support on all those areas. Um, and just a brief overview of what we've got um, coming up over the next couple of months. So lots of training courses from customs clearance, letters of credit, trading with the EU, following Brexit, trading with Egypt and their new Cargo X platform in Egypt. Um, we've also got two events coming up in the next couple of weeks, one on exploring opportunities within the blue economy, and then another one where we've got a Turkish delegation and a face-to-face -face event um, at Lancashire Cr uh, Cricket Club um, with Turkish um, suppliers looking to come to the UK um, and meet with buyers. And some of those events I've mentioned are free of charge, and if you are a member of the Chamber, you will get discount on all our training courses. Um, so just before we kick off, um, I'm just going to gauge who we've got on today's webinar. So if we could just launch our first poll um, and give you a couple of minutes to answer it. So how have you found the movement of goods to and from NI since uh, the 1st of January 2021? So throughout this past year, uh, if you're trading with Northern Ireland, how have you found um, the movement of goods in that process? And Yelavis, if I just hand over to you for um, the results when you're ready. Yeah, we'll just give it a minute for everyone to answer and share them shortly. So we've got 38% um, of the attendees have found the moderately easy. 54% uh, have found it moderately difficult and 8% still um, find it early, too early to say. I'll hand over to you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to hand over to Shanelli and the team at TSS who are going to take you through today's presentation and I believe there will be lots of the team on hand to take questions so please post in the chat throughout but over to you guys. Oh, great. Thanks so much. Uh, so hi, everyone. I'm Shanali Dashani. I work as a consultant at Fujitsu, helping within our border um, and customer transformation team. Um, Fujitsu is one of uh, the consortium partners who has helped to deliver the trader support service on behalf of HMRC. Uh, as you can see, we've got lots of colleagues on um, who kind of span across our stakeholder engagement team. So I'll just pass over to Shankar to introduce himself uh, and then we'll pop up the slides. Yeah, thanks, Shanali. Um, I'm Shankar Singham. Uh, I lead the Trade Support Service um, Customs and Trade Policy um, area of work and, and the stakeholder engagement uh, work as well. So um, looking forward to um, uh, answering all your questions. We'll, we'll have people answering those questions, as Shanali said, in the background. So please start posting them and uh, we'll, we'll stop getting the answers flowing out to you. Thank you, Dash, Whichever. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Magda brzozowska Dani, also working on TSS from the Fujitsu side as a custom specialist. So I'll be the one of those sitting in the background and answering any questions you might have on the Q&A section. Thank you. Thank you, Magda. Um, my name is Doreen Crawford. Um, again, I work as part of the partnership for the Trader Support Service, and I represent the Institute of Export, providing training and education for the service. And I will be answering questions today, also with Magda. Thank you. Great, thank you all. So let me just get the slides up. Please let me know when you can see them. Yes, we can. Great. Um, so as we said, um, this is really sort of a, one of the first sessions we've had with the Chamber to go through what the Trader Support Service is. Um, so hopefully this doesn't feel uh, too familiar for everyone, uh, but we will kind of be going right back to the, to the beginning you know, to ensure that we're all kind of aligned on the acronyms because there are unfortunately quite a lot of them. So we'll kind of go through what the process looks like to move goods now from Great Britain into Northern Ireland. What are the declaration types that TSS supports? Um, where you might need to do additional things for controlled goods like food goods um, and plant goods, etc. Um, what you need to know when we talk about your tariff strategy. So when you submit your supplementary declaration, do you know the best ways to um, either minimise your uh, tariff obligation or potentially remove it uh, using things like custom special procedures or being signed up to the UK trader scheme? Um, so we'll talk about some of those in a bit more detail. Um, we do have a couple slides right at the end around custom special procedures and reliefs that you can use to help um, suspend the duty or move your goods um, under some sort of duty relief procedure. So things like inward processing, outward processing, return goods relief, etc. cetera. Um, we won't really cover it in this session simply uh, due to the time constraint, um, but we, as you'll see as we go throughout the presentation, there's lots and lots of educational material um, and we've done webinars on that in quite a lot of detail before. Um, so don't worry, there is lots of information out there, but we think um, it might be worth covering that at a different time. And then as you can see, we're really quite keen to have a detailed Q&A session at the end to kind of cover off any complex questions. But if you do think of anything, please pop them in the chat. As you can see, we do have lots of people on uh, to help answer as we go through. So what is the TSS? It is a completely free to use digital service, which essentially will help all traders moving goods from Great Britain into Northern Ireland to submit their declarations digitally. Um, and this was all done for when the Northern Ireland protocol came into effect on the 1st of January last year. Um, as we know, this is obviously, it was kind of a different situation, um, quite unique for Northern Ireland, as opposed to the rest of um, sort of Great Britain trading with the EU, um, simply because of, of the way that uh, trade works on the island of Ireland uh, and, the, and the need to maintain a completely open border there. So it meant that the Northern Ireland Protocol uh, sort of applied dual regulation, and that's where the TSS was brought in to help uh, all traders moving goods to understand what are the new requirements? How do they affect me? What does my business process now look like and how do I declare the various types of goods that I need to move? Um, so to that end, one of the TSS's core focus um, is absolutely the education element. So we've stood up um, an education site called NICTA or the Northern Ireland Customs and Trade Academy.co.uk. You'll see loads and loads of links to guidance uh, throughout the presentation. And um, please don't worry about taking notes. We will make sure these slides are shared with you. Um, and if you haven't visited NICTA already, please do. Um, it's completely free to use. You don't need a government gateway or a TSS account to access it. Um, so it's almost kind of set up as like a free online university. And it takes you through every single bit of guidance that the TSS has put out since we went live uh, over a year and a half ago. So you have um, sort of like user guides, which are kind of like comprehensive um, packs. You then have, um, if you're really interested in the data elements, some um, kind of kind of complex data guides. If you're kind of looking for a, a much kind of like easier way of somebody showing you on the screen, a demo of the system where you need to put your data in. We have hundreds of videos that have been uploaded by our agents. And then finally, if you're kind of looking for a deep dive into a topic, We've also run a huge amount of webinars that kind of cover lots of the topics we'll talk about today, but in a much better uh, detail. So please do take a look if you haven't already. As I said, what the TSS actually does is provide a digital way of doing declarations. So there is no paper-based systems within the TSS. We tried really hard to do everything online at the portal at tradersupportservice.co.uk. Um, you're there, you're able to see your kind of supply chain network, your hauliers, your traders, etc. cetera. Um, we now also have the ability for agents um, to act in their own right on the TSS and you as the trader can authorize them to make declarations on your behalf. Uh, and you can, you're able to kind of keep declarations in draft, see the ones that you've submitted kind of on the historic, uh, in a historic view. 
And finally, if at any point you need kind of a bit more of like a human level of support, we've stood up an absolutely huge contact centre uh, of sort of like tiered levels of agents. So you have a tier one who kind of act very much as sort of like call centre staff are there to kind of handle all of those inbound uh, calls that we get. You then have your tier two, so have a couple of years of customer's experience, can begin to point you in the right direction uh, to the guidance or uh, to kind of point out maybe where things are going wrong. And then finally, we have uh, you go up to a tier three, which is sort of, you know, someone who's had 10, 20 years of customer's experience. They're really there to kind of start looking at your declarations. Why are these error codes popping up? What is it that's going wrong? And help you kind of walk through that process. Um, it is worth noting, so that's what the TSS does do. There's a few things that we cannot do. Um, as we serve the entire market of traders moving goods uh, for free into Northern Ireland, we have something like 45,000 registered traders. So we can't really provide a super personalized service that a customs broker would normally do. Um, but we do, we have tried hard, as you can see, to kind of um, tailor as much of the advice as we can. But if you feel like at any point you need slightly more or a higher level of support, then we do urge you to reach out to the existing intermediary market, as there are some fantastic companies that have stood up, um, you know, huge amounts of customs and shipping service ready for Brexit. Um, so do take a look around you. Um, and finally, we don't raise any of the non-standard documentation. So, for example, if you move cheese or wine into Northern Ireland, there will be certain things you need to do, whether it's an excise permit or an export health certificate for your cheese goods, for example. We cannot raise them for you as it is outside of our sort of like customs remit, but we can tell you exactly what it is that you need, why you need it how you obtain it and where it fits in your end-to-end -end TSS journey. Um, and as you can see there, right at the bottom of the left of the screen, um, it's important to kind of get the processes locked in now because eventually TSS will exit the market as we were sort of brought in to help with that immediate impact um, from the Northern Ireland Protocol. So we really want to make sure that there is a really strong level of customs and trade support set up all across the UK uh, ready for when we do exit. Um, so we won't spend too long on this, but just to kind of show you some happy stats, um, we've now moved something like over 5 million uh, declarations, we've moved over uh, almost 2 million consignments have moved to date into Northern Ireland, uh, and as you can see the numbers are kind of like finally steadied out post-Covid. Um, we continue to bring out new functionality, new service enhancements all the time. The service is still absolutely live uh, from a development perspective. So, you know, any feedback you have is always really valuable because we are always trying to improve. As you can see, we've had 100% availability and we're really, really proud of the service we've stood up ultimately. And so a quick look at what is the actual TSS process. So we focus on generally three types of declarations. The first is the entry summary, the ENS or the safety and security declaration. Um, this is needed because Northern Ireland forms part of the EU security zone. Um, so it's a declaration that basically looks at what are the goods that you're moving? Where is it moved from? Where is it going to? And what is the vehicle information? Um, and as you'll see on the next slide, this is why it is typically done by your haulier or the person transporting your goods. You then have your customs import declaration and TSS made a decision in the early days to use um, custom simplified um, the CFSP procedures to so the simplified procedure to essentially say, let's make this as easy as we can for all of our new traders, most of whom were, will not have really had any customs experience. So why don't we prioritize getting the goods into Northern Ireland, you know, prioritize flow, and then it gives everyone a bit more time to log back on uh, to complete the declaration. So what we did was split the declaration into two halves. The first half is the simplified frontier declaration, pretty much does what it says on the tin. It's a simplified data set. And this, we try to take that a step further and we use the exact same data set as your haulier provides for the safety and security declaration, uh, as I'll show you again in a minute. And then once your goods have moved, you then are able to log back onto the system to complete the supplementary declaration, which is sort of the second half of the customs import declaration. And it's like slightly uh, more detailed. It's kind of where you have more of the meat, you know, what's your tariff, uh, what your commodity codes. And it's at that point you pay any duties if required. Um, and if uh, from a business point of view, you're quite comfortable with your data, you'd rather just do it all up front before the goods moved, you can absolutely do that and submit a full frontier declaration, which is doing the full declaration in one go, uh, paying any GTs, and then your goods move as normal. Um, so just time to show you it in a slightly more visual way. Um, we normally say step one, double check what your INCO terms are, what are your shipping agreements? That's really important because the TSS model is built on the NI buyer, the person receiving the goods, as being the importer of record. Um, so that normally means they will be the person that's interacting with the TSS system. They will be the one that needs to log on to complete the declarations. 
If, however, you move goods under an INCO term, such as delivered duty paid or DDP, it might actually be your GB supplier that's responsible and is the importer of record, in which case your life might be a lot easier. So it's kind of worth looking at who it is that's doing what, because it will change um, the roles within the TSS uh, portal. Once you know exactly who is doing what, it will normally, the journey normally begins with your haulier. Um, so the person transporting your goods will log onto the TSS portal. They will provide the EORI numbers or, the, or those business identification numbers of the supplier and the buyer. So the GB supplier, the EORI number, um, a basic description of the goods, and they'll add in the vehicle information. We then send that um, to the relevant government system, which is ICS Northern Ireland. We then use that exact same data set to automatically complete the simplified frontier declaration on your behalf. Uh, we then send that to CDS, which is the custom system operating in Northern Ireland and seems to be across the rest of the UK. So at that point, both of those declarations have been done. And if both those systems come back with the clearances, you get what's known as a movement reference number or an MRN. So I apologize now for all the acronyms, but essentially both of those say that the security compliance and the customs compliance has been done and it comes back to you via the portal. And then your haulier will need to do one more step before the journey can actually begin. And that's logging on to another government system called GVMS or the goods vehicle movement system, which essentially is tracking the movement across the Irish Sea. And your haulier will put in both of those movement reference numbers. So one for the security deck, one for the simplified frontier deck. And GVMS will validate both of those um, movement reference numbers. And if it's uh, happy with uh, the level of compliance, it will give you another clearance in the form of a barcode known as a goods movement reference or a GMR. That, that step, that GMR is really important because when your haulier actually begins the journey uh, into Northern Ireland, for example, gets to uh, Liverpool to board the ferry to Belfast, before they're able to board the ferry, the ferry operator will ask to see the GMR if it's a freight vehicle. So that's why that step is really important. Um, and then once boarding has occurred, it's the scanning of that GMR by the ferry operator that tells TSS, OK, this journey is now live and we will ping whoever's URI number. So whoever was listed by the haulier as the importer of record, we will contact them to say, OK, your goods have now moved. You have until the fourth working day of the following month to log back onto the TSS portal and complete that second half of that declaration, the supplementary declaration uh, and, and pay any duties if applicable. Um, so apologies if, if, that, if that's gone a bit too fast. I know we've got some questions popping up. Um, so let me know if any of that um, wants to be covered in more detail. But essentially those are kind of the building blocks. So your safety and security deck is done by the haulier. TSS then automatically completes the simplified frontier or the first half of the customs deck. Your goods can then move provided you get that GMR step in the middle. And then once the goods are delivered, you as the trader have until the fourth working day of the following month to log back on and complete the declaration. Um, as I said, if you did want to do just one declaration up front, um, that's absolutely fine. There is no real right answer here. It is just down to whatever suits your business. We generally tell, um, advise um, all of our customers to say it's worth kind of sticking to the simplified process if you're not sure. But if you're well versed in kind of all the customs compliance data or as a business, you just prefer from a cash flow perspective to get the duties paid up front, then you are absolutely enabled to do the full frontier, as I said. And the only difference here is once your haulier completes the, the, um, the safety and security declaration, you as the trader would need to log on, complete the full frontier declaration, ensure that's been submitted and paid for if needed. And then the, the journey continues. You just don't need to do anything once the goods are delivered because the import is now complete. Um, so I'll just pause there to see Oh, uh, um, if we've got any questions, but I think we're OK. Um, so apologies, as I said, we are going through this fairly quickly, but if there's anything you want to know more of, as I said, um, if you visit NICTA, as you can start seeing um, the links here too, all of this has been covered in much, much more detail, so please do take a look. Um, this is sort of just a reminder of if you do move goods that come under controlled, um, and it's really important to note here, when we say controlled goods, it doesn't fall under sort of the normal customs term of controlled, so not just things like excise goods or alcohol, tobacco, things like firearms, ozone depleting gases, but it also covers anything that's regulated by any government department. So if you move goods that fall under a DEFRA control uh, or what's known as sanitary and phytosanitary, so SPS goods is kind of the term. So are you talking about these could be live animals, animal products, meat products, food products, plant products? All of these will be listed as a controlled good under the TSS system. So please ensure that you follow that path um, when you first submit a declaration. 
And of course, it does include goods moving under a customer special procedure or relief also, as it falls under an extra form of control. If you're not sure whether your goods are controlled, as you can see, there's a link at the bottom of the page there to the, on, the Northern Ireland online tariff tool. You can just pop in your commodity code or your goods type and it will let you know um, whether there's anything needed, what, what that might be, is it a certificate or whether you need to do anything extra. Um, so just a quick note on if you are moving SPS goods, so the meat goods, the food goods, etc., um, you will need to do an additional step, uh, which is when the goods leave the GB site, they will need to be signed and sealed and certified by an official vet. That's really, really important that that is sorted on the GB side, as it's, it's the vet, you'll need them to certify that the goods are healthy and that they're at a correct level of status in an export health certificate. And then you, as the NI buyer, uh, would need to then log on to traces which is the eu system um sort of covering the movements of these types of goods and you will need to update what's known as a ched form with that certificate number uh, and this is just the eu's way of checking that health regulations have been uh, maintained so, you know are you moving chickens that are, are definitely healthy is there been any problems with meat and so those are additional steps that you don't do in the tss but when you, it's really important that those are done beforehand as when you come to doing your tss declaration we will ask for that, those references um, so I won't scare you too much with this slide. It's just a, re a reminder, if, if you do move these goods, please ensure that you, there is somebody, generally it would be the buyer who is completing the CHED on traces. CHED is just the common health entry document, and it just contains the information about the food good in particular. This will need to be done generally 24 hours at least in advance of arrival. You need to update it with the, um, the certificate number once it's signed by an official vet, and then all of that needs to be updated into traces and then traces will give you a reference number which you need to do when entering your customs declaration here on TSS. Um, so I won't spend too long on that but again if you want to know any more on that please just follow this checklist. Are you registered on traces? Are you letting traces know that this movement is occurring 24 hours in advance? You do that by filling in a CHED form and then you need to attach the export health certificate or the phytosanitary which is the plant version uh, and both of those will need to be done on the GB side before the goods move. Um, and that's just the standard process for moving um, any sort of food goods into Northern Ireland. And then that's really important because you will need that when you complete your TSS customs declaration. Um, and then here is just an image of the online uh, tariff tool I mentioned. So if you're not sure if the good that you move does fall under any controls, you can type it in and it lets you know here you need a common health entry. So a CHED is needed and it's a CHED P because you're moving a plant good. And it tells you here is that this is the TSS declaration and that's where you'll need to put the document code. And if any of that is ringing alarm bells or you just want to know a bit more, um, as you can see, there were links to the user guides and this is a video showing you exactly how you can do this on the TSS portal. Um, so I will pause there for a second. Um, great, thanks Doreen um, for pinging Nectar in there. Um, we'll continue on. Um, so this is pretty much what we were talking about earlier, just in a slightly different visual format. Um, so just a reminder again of the flow, the trader will register on the TSS platform, your haulier or the person carrying the goods will submit the, the shipment information to TSS. And this is what produces the, the ENS or the safety and security declaration. TSS then uses that to create that first half of that customs declaration, the simplified frontier deck on behalf of the trader. This means your goods are now ready to move, provided you add, um, you obtain that GMR from the GVMS system. You can then board the ferry, your goods continue on. They've now arrived in Northern Ireland and the trader now has um, to needs to look back onto the TSS system and complete the supplementary declaration and pay any duties if applicable. Um, just a reminder of, uh, you absolutely do, unfortunately, need to complete the supplementary declaration um, just because if you're looking at it from a trade perspective, you might not actually be interacting with the system until this point because your haulier will have raised the safety and security deck for you. TSS is the simplified frontier deck. So now you need to log back on to complete this. It's an absolutely illegal requirement um, and your import isn't complete until you've done this. So please ensure that you are kind of comfortable with the system and you are completing. It's also really important to note 
the person, the trader who's going to get pinged by TSS, all of this is being defined by whatever information was put in at that first declaration. So please ensure that your haulier has all the correct business details and that the, the declarations that are coming to you are the ones that you need to um, complete and it's your liability to. If you feel like you've got some declarations in there for goods that you de definitely did not move, that's probably just because the wrong URI number or an error has occurred um, when linking to your trader account. Please just raise the case on the TSS portal and somebody will get that removed from your account for you. Um, and again, just a reminder of how the days work. So, for example, if you moved goods today on the 17th of March, you would have until the fourth working day of April um, to then complete that declaration. So just it's kind of always a rolling timetable, uh, but it will depend where in the month that you've moved it. So please just check that you are always submitting uh, in the right deadline times. Um, and just before I hand over to Shankar, um, what we're going to now look at is if you're now thinking of yourself as the trader, you are now logging into the system to complete your supplementary declaration. Now, do you understand what it is that you need to do? And this, what we're really, really trying to emphasize here is there are so many routes um, for traders, especially UK traders moving goods within the UK. You know, are they staying in Northern Ireland? Can you evidence that? There's lots of different ways of reducing your tariff. So we're just trying to make sure that traders um, aren't paying tariffs where they don't need to, or maybe being caught out um, simply because they haven't done some of these checks. So please, please, if any of this feels new, please do double check because we've um, a whole a lot of work has gone um, has been done between TSS HMRC um, to really try and understand are there sectors um, of trade, are there lots of segments of traders where we can help minimise um, your tariff exposure and ultimately help kind of make this process as smooth as we can. You know, things have changed. You will need to complete declarations, but we're trying to make this as easy as we can and at least um, minimise your tariff where possible. Um, so the checks that you need to do are generally in these four. Um, I'll hand over to Shankar um, and we've got slides on each of these kind of showing through the criteria. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Shanoli. Um, uh, I, I should say at the outset of this that um, obviously you'll be aware that um, there is a uh, process where the UK and the EU are negotiating right now um, on the Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, those negotiations continue and are, as they continue, uh, there is a standstill, which means that um, everything that is currently uh, subject to an easement or a uh, grace period con continues. So in other words, nothing is changing. Um, so there, there are grace periods on things like fast parcel operators. Um, uh, Shanali referred to the Stanmi scheme for supermarkets and their authorised traders. Uh, all of that continues without change until we get to a negotiated um, solution. Um, and some of that, some of the things being discussed in the negotiated solution will change um, depending on how that negotiation goes. They will change um the way this process works so what i'm going to describe is what the current situation is but um uh, and I, I may mention as we go through this why certain things i'm going to emphasize a bit more than others um based on where the negotiations um seem to be going so um when you do the supplementary declaration or if you're doing a full fronted declaration when you do that declaration um, the, the critical thing is to understand what your tariff options are, because obviously you don't want to pay a tariff if you don't have to. Um, uh, so the reason that the tariff applies at all is because uh, under the protocol, um, uh, the UCC, the, the European customs rules are applied in Northern Ireland. Uh, and so there may be uh, a, a tariff depending on um, precisely what, what it is that you're doing. So the first thing to check is, is what the EU common external tariff is for your products, because there are there are some products, not that many, but there are some products where the EU's um, external um, tariff is zero. And of course, if that's the case, then there's never a tariff uh, to, to, to worry about. Uh, this next one is really important. Um, your, uh, a movement from GB to Northern Ireland is a movement inside the UK customs territory. Uh, and therefore, there is a, a scheme uh, called the UK Trader Scheme for not at risk trade. In other words, trade where there's no risk of it going on to Ireland. So it's trade that's entirely within the UK customs territory. And if you are eligible for this, and, and so what you have, and I'll talk in a little bit how to prove that you're eligible for this, but if you are eligible for this, uh, it is the 
probably the most important thing you can do is to register for the UK trader scheme because then all of the rules that apply to EU uh, at-risk goods uh, you know ensuring that you're satisfying rules of origin if you want to claim the preference under the UK trade agreement the EU UK TCA uh, none of this would apply to you uh, having to pay um, you know a, a trade remedy because uh, um, of a of a particular trade remedy involving, for example, goods from China um, or the application of sanctions with regard to goods from Russia. I mean, there's there's so many things that would apply uh, to you if you're at risk that, that simply don't apply if you're on the UK trader scheme. So it's, it, if you can get on it, it's very, very important. If you can't get on it, then um, uh, you, you will need to check whether the the tariffs of the EU UK TCA, which reduced tariffs to zero, so there's no tariffs and no quotas in the agreement, apply to you. And the, the most important thing there is what are the rules of origin? Because not every good that's going from GB to NI is going to satisfy the TCA rules of origin. It will depend on you know, what's the level of local content in, in GB. There's many, many other issues in rules of origin, which tend to be quite complicated. So you would, you would need to, to check that. But the reason we have the UK trader scheme first is we would not want you to have to go through that exercise if you don't have to. Um, so you might say, well, shouldn't I just check the TCA first? And if it's zero, then I don't need to worry about the trader scheme. We would encourage you to do it the other way around. Um, because rule, a rule of origin checks are complex and the rules of origin of the EU UK TCA are, um, are, are, are not, not easy, uh, they're, they're quite restrictive. And then finally, if none of this applies to you, um, uh, ca can you use, do you fall within the de minimis threshold, which is uh, um, the application of the European Union state aid rules, which allows you to claim a waiver for, for duty up to a certain level? Um, and you, you, you may have to use that if there's nothing else you can use. And, and uh, if, you, if you can't use all of that, then the only other way of um, uh, 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 not having to pay a duty would be um, to use uh, custom special procedures to ensure that your goods are not going into free circulation in GB, that they are, um, uh, that, that they are essentially um, in entering Ireland without going into free circulation in GB. And we'll talk about special procedures later on. We're not going to spend a lot of time on special procedures because of the, the, the lack of time uh, that we have. Um, but certainly if there are people here um, who want to know about that, we can we can do a special session on that. Can we go to the next slide, please? So UK trader scheme, how do you register for the UK trader scheme? So the the first of all, it's 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 for not at risk goods. In other words, goods that have no risk of moving to the EU. Um, uh, you need to demonstrate that you can control that you control that you have some control over the movements from GB to NI. Um, you have to show that the goods are being sold to or provided for final use by end consumers located in Northern Ireland. Uh, all there for internal UK trade. In other words, they're moving within the UK customs territory. Um, the, it was a provisional authorization first in, in, in the early part of 2021. We're now in a different uh, environment where you have to apply and HMRC will um, look over your application and determine whether you're authorized or not. If we go to the next slide. So what are the criteria you have to establish? Now, um, the first criteria, the establishment criteria is in the protocol and it's in the joint um, decision, but it has been waived. So, so this requirement to be established in Northern Ireland, in other words, to have a facility, a real facility in Northern Ireland um, is, is not necessary uh, right now, um, uh, provided you are using uh, an indirect representative uh, and the TSS is an indirect representative for these purposes if you're sort of established in, in, in GB. So what we would say here is if you are, and this will apply to GB suppliers who are supplying um, you know, your Northern Ireland importer on DDP terms. So if you're on DDP terms, delivered duty paid, then you are the importer of record and you are the person who it has to do the customs declaration. And so um, in that case, 
you don't need to have that establishment in Northern Ireland at the moment. That is an easement. Uh, it is indefinitely um, suspended. The requirement is indefinitely suspended as part of the standstill arrangements. You do have to have a good customs and tax compliance record uh, and no record of serious criminal uh, offences. Now, I'll just come back to something Shanali said about the, um, the need to do the, the supplementary declarations. Technically, you have not done an import declaration if you don't do the supplementary declaration. So don't think that I've done the SFD, um, it's okay now, uh, the goods are in Northern Ireland, they're being used, why should I do this supplementary declaration? Um, Contrary to what the name suggests, it's not a additional optional extra. It is, um, it is a, it is, it is part of the import declaration. You haven't done it. You haven't done an import declaration, and therefore you wouldn't be. Um, you wouldn't have a good customs and tax compliance record, and that would affect your ability to be on some of these schemes. So it is important that you do these things. Um, you, you need to have records that show your your end use uh, as a sort of consumer use. Um, and um, uh, there may be additional requirements if you are um, if your if your goods are subject to processing. This is part of the protocol um, and part of the interpretation of the protocol. So, if your goods are subject to processing, you may not be able to get onto this scheme unless you are subject to processing ex exemptions. If we go to the next slide, uh, and, and those processing exemptions uh, are, are essentially, um, if you're in the food trade, uh, medical, um, not-for-profit, uh, and there is a small trader exception for, for revenue under, under 500,000. Um, so what, what would you do if you're, if you're on the UK trader scheme? On your supplementary dec declaration, you use the NIREM code to claim they're not at risk, and then you won't the system will not generate any requirement for duty or, or anything. You do have to maintain evidence of this for five years, um, the, the sale to consumers in Northern Ireland or the business use in Northern Ireland. Um, and uh, so there are some requirements to keep uh, for, for, for record keeping with, with this particular scheme. If we go to the next slide. So I mentioned the, um, the, the, the exemptions if goods are subject to processing. So sale of food, construction, healthcare services, not-for-profit, final use um, of animal feed on premises. These are all exceptions where you can still be on the UK trader scheme. If you're a very small processor and um, uh, you're, you're a business and it's under £500,000 in turnover, then you can be on the UK trader scheme. Otherwise, at the moment, goods subject to processing, uh, you can't be on the UK trader scheme. Now, this is one of the issues that's being discussed uh, in the negotiations. So actually, it would be useful if you if you feel like you're in this category. Uh, in other words, you're, you're subject to processing and you're not able, therefore, to use any of these exemptions and you're not able to get on the UK trader scheme. It would be useful um, for us to know what your, what your situation is, because the, the, this is very much um, being debated, being discussed between the two sides right now. We go to the next slide. Uh, there is a mechanism that that, that applies. The, the intention is not that you know if, if I have some goods that are going to Ireland that I should be you know un, unable to take advantage of the not at risk rules. So there is a, a concept called apportionment where um, you, you need to notify HMRC of your intent to use it. What this does is it enables you to uh, essentially apportion your goods in your supplementary declaration entry into not at risk and at risk goods. Now, in order to do this, um, you, you have to have stable supply chains. So you need to provide evidence that, um, you know, for the last three years, for example, that the, the percentage uh, of goods that have gone to Ireland versus Northern Ireland is around the same. I mean, it doesn't have to be identical. But roughly speaking, as a rule of thumb, 10% margin of error. You know, if it moves a little bit, you know, one way or the other, that's that's fine. Um, but what people are looking for is, are you, do you have a stable supply chain where you can take the things that are staying in Northern Ireland that are not at risk and um, uh, use the UK trader scheme to ensure you're not subject to a, a, a tariff? If we go to the next slide.
So uh, can you use a waiver if you're at risk? Uh, and this is the EU's de minimis. So you're allowed to, to, to have de minimis state aid up to a maximum of 200,000 euro for three fiscal years. Now, there are some sectors where there are lower allowances in, 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 in certain key sectors. So you need to look at things like agriculture and so on. Um, if you're a business owner, um, you know, you, you, you could, this could help you because it certainly could lower your, uh, the requirement to what you'd have to pay out um, uh, under the tariff. Um, what do you need to do in order to claim it? You need an EORI number. You need to submit details on the online form that we've that we've put on the uh, on the slide there. Um, and so that's what um, uh, you need to do to do this. Now, the waiver you get is a a, a blanket de minimis um, state aid. So if you're getting state aid in other areas, uh, you might be getting a research and development credit. You might be getting all kinds of different things. You have to add that all up because it isn't. This isn't a only for the, this particular fact. This this is uh, added to all the other state aids that you receive. And then if we go to the next slide. Um, we have launched a supp supplementary declaration assistant, um, which is designed to help um, you do your supplementary declarations. So if you are authorised on the UK Trader Scheme, um, or you're claiming the waiver, then you can use this tool um, to essentially group your um, goods in under a single commodity code. Now, the, the, normally, when you use grouping, which is fully UCC compliant, um, the downside is you get a simplification on process, but you group to the highest tariff. Um, so you've got a bunch of different goods, uh, all have different tariffs. You, you group everything to the highest tariff, and that's obviously a disadvantage from a cash flow standpoint. But of course, if you're on the UK trader scheme, there's no tariff that's ever going to be applied. And there's no tariff that's relevant. So um, you uh, get all the benefit of the process simplification without any of the without any of the costs. So we certainly think this is a very good way um, of um, uh, of filling in your your, your declarations. And we, we've been able to process declarations for people at very high speed using the supplementary declaration assistant. So if we go to the next slide, please. Just conscious of time here. Um, so there's a video, and uh, you know you can click on that link for the NICTA, um, where where you've got the resources and the how-to guides and so forth. Um, one of the things we are doing, I'll probably skip over this a little bit because um, we are developing these decision engines, you know, as we speak, and making them a little bit more easy for traders to essentially handle. Uh, but this, the the idea of the decision engine, what you'll see as a trader when we when we release this is, um, you'll see a set of questions that should be relatively straightforward, uh, and that decision engine is designed to sort of take you through the logic that I've just explained, um, and uh, or rather, to, it, it it will it will take your answers and go through the logic of what I've explained, and then it will tell you which thing you need to do. I mean, how basically how do you you know what's the best way of doing the supplementary declaration for you um so in terms of the actual things that i talked about um uh, ni rem for goods not at risk ni aid is what you'd use if you're claiming the waiver and then at the front end on the header um the, the, the beginning of the process you need to use the ni dom code for free circulation which is what most of uh, most of this will be. But if you are using, if you are going to use special procedures, for example, because there's no other way of avoiding the tariff, um, uh, you need to put in use the NI imp code for for special procedures. Um, if we go to the next slide, so in summary, those are the things you need to check. The uh, what what is the external tariff? Or can you be on the UK trader scheme? Uh, if not. You know, you may need to use the UK EU TCA. You need to check the rules of origin. Can you use the waiver? Do, do I need to use special procedures? And next slide. Yeah. So I think we could probably wrap it here, Shankar. But I guess just to give um people a flavour of, like I said, we won't go through this today simply because of the time. Um, but if you're keen, we can do a follow up on this. Or as you'll see, if you um, when we circulate the slides, there's a whole set of material um, on these various procedures that TSS does support. So moving goods in and out of customs warehousing, inward processing, outward processing, um, 
And we really want to draw your attention to just quickly the return goods relief because you don't need to be authorised for that. So if you know you're a retailer moving goods constantly between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, or if your goods originated in the EU and then are flowing via GB, you might be able to literally just use the code for this. So we really do urge, you know, take a look because we think that might be one of the most useful ones. Um, and there are also different things. Um, if you look on the TSS website, if you go onto NICTA and you look at the portal, if you are moving goods which fall under temporary admission, so, you know, you're moving goods in for a music gig or a temporary art exhibition or, you know, things like disaster relief, medical equipment, etc. There's a whole load of scenarios where you actually are exempted from doing a lot of this and you simply need to follow an oral declaration process. Um, so it's a bit of a whistle stop tour, but there are, you know, as, as we were trying to say, there are lots of uh, things that we've worked really hard to try and remove the, the burdens down as much as we can. Um, so please do let us know if you'd like to know more about that. Um, and you can sort of peruse these slides um, at your own leisure. As I said, we'll send them out after this. Yeah. So I think I think um, what what we conclude um, with, and, and one request actually for me is, if you think you can't get on the UK Trader Scheme because of some of the rules that that apply, and and you can't be on the UK Trader Scheme if you. Um, it's not only subject to processing goods subject to processing is also goods are subject to a trade remedy for example which which, which can be quite relevant right now um uh let us know uh what that is because uh, i think it'd be useful for us to know you know how many people are negatively affected by some of these rules around uh, how the uk trader scheme operates so we can you know better better serve you so with that, I think we'll close. And if there are any questions we're, that haven't been answered in the in, in the chat, I'm happy to happy to answer them now. Thanks both for that great presentation. Um, we did actually have a couple of questions that were sent in advance from a couple mm -hmm. of members that couldn't join us. Um, one was regarding the is the UK Traders Scheme here to stay, um, or is that something that's currently being um, negotiated in the so, yeah, so, so, so um, uh, we have to be very clear about that. Unfortunately, there are a lot of schemes here. There's the Trader Support Service itself. There is the UK Trader Scheme. There is the Authorised Trader Scheme for supermarkets and food, uh, essentially food uh, producers. Uh, if you're talking about the UK Trader Scheme, um, that not at risk category is part of the protocol. And um, if anything, it will be expanded. You know, so any future unilateral action by the UK government or any future uh, negotiated solution that the parties come to will um, expand the uh, scope. Uh, so if you look even at the EU's non-papers, which is the sort of base level of the, you know, obviously we'll do that, we'll do at least that. Um, UK wants to do more, but we'll do at least that. They have said that the UK trader scheme scope of beneficiaries, the, the number of beneficiaries and the scope of the benefits should increase. So it is here to stay, and it, in fact, it will grow. It will be it will be expanded. How much it will be expanded, you know, that we don't know yet. But it is here to stay. Um, in contrast to the authorised trader scheme and the Stanley, which which was intended to be a grace period. Now, because of the standstill, it's a grace period that is continuing. So uh, there's no there's no end date for it as yet. But it will, at some point, um, uh, you know, it will. Um, uh, it will stop, but not not for a while yet. Perfect, thank you. And the other one was around if the agent is um, submitting the declarations on their behalf, they haven't had any notifications from um, TSS, how do they get access to that or is that something you can check for them? Yeah, so we did introduce functionality where agents and intermediaries were able to have their own accounts on TSS, and we did that actually to help the trader. So um, the, 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 the traders were asking and their, and their agents and intermediaries were asking for the kind of functionality where they could just have one account on TSS, you know, an agent would have one account for all their people, and they would be able to easily do um, the customs entries without the supplementary declaration information always going back to the trader because we were we'd heard the traders didn't want if you've hired an intermediary you, you want the intermediary to do the work you don't you don't want to be constantly interrupted with emails so that's the way it works now so if you 
you know, you, you can always use the TSS directly. There's, there's no requirement for you to use an agent or an intermediary. Uh, if you are using an agent or an intermediary and you want more information, then, then what I would suggest is you talk to your agent um, uh, about giving you that information. Uh, but, you know, it is open to you. Um, to, 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 the system is designed for self-service. I mean, it's designed for people to be able to use it without an intermediary. It's a bit like... Um, you know, you you can do your 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 account your your tax filing yourself. You know, using self service in, on HMRC's uh, portal. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. But most people, uh, or many people, will just hire an accountant because it's easier to do that. And and it's a, it's a little bit the same with this. Yeah, thanks. And is there any way that they can get hold? You know, if the agent's not sending the paperwork through or anything from TSS, can they get hold um, of it essentially? So, so I mean, you can raise a case, and we can see what we can do. But, but the, the that question suggests there's a sort of breakdown in the relationship between the agent and the and the and, the, and their customer. And what I would recommend, in if that's the case, is just know that you you the system is designed for you to do these yourself. You can do it yourself, and if you did it yourself, then you could have all the all the information. Obviously, uh, more, more information than you probably would want to have. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I think that's all the questions we had in advance. I think there's a few in the chat, so I'll uh, leave that up to you guys if you want to comment on anything. Um, no, that's fine. There's not been too many. Um, we would just say if there's anything you think of after this, because we have thrown a huge amount of information at you, um, please either contact us directly or go via the chamber. Um, Amy, happy to, you know, if people are sort of a bit more comfortable talking offline or if um, but probably we think would be the, might, the most useful is if there are sort of topics that have popped up that you think actually that might be really useful for my business or we, we're trying to think about this but we don't really understand how it would work let us know and we can set up a one-to-one -one, um and you can, we can kind of go through some of the more you know commercial th things that feel maybe a bit more confidential that you don't want to raise on a webinar um you know we really want to stress we are completely free to use so we you know while there's lots of experts around please ask all of your questions um because we really are here to support uh you, you know traders moving good so um please just reach out um we're more than happy to do any follow-up sessions also so just yeah let us know Perfect. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, I know Yale Livers will be in touch with um, slides, recording, and obviously let her know if you've got any questions and she can direct you to the team. Uh, just a reminder as well that the Chamber does offer customs clearance services under our Chamber Customs uh, brands. So if you do need any support, um, you know, after TSS has ended, regarding Northern Ireland declarations or any declarations to the Republic of Ireland or the rest of the EU, then please get in touch. And again, Yale Abyss will include some details in a follow-up. But I think we just got a last poll on feedback. So if you do have any final questions while we launch that, um, then please just uh, post in the chat box now. And if not, if you can just fee fill in a very short poll. And I'm just going to pop up um, our contact details as well. So you've got those um, if you want to get in touch with the chamber. So um, you've got a general line there for import and export queries for our customs clearance services and then for our documentation. Um, but if you've got any questions, um, either reply to the follow up from today or send through to Export Britain, we'll direct the uh, right team. And if we don't have any more questions, I just want, want to thank uh, Shanelli and Shanka and the team for answering the questions in the back today. And uh, thanks for joining us. Um, and yeah, it's been really informative. So thank you for your time. Thanks all. Great, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.